This is the Toyota RAV4 Hybrid, the hybrid version of the best-selling small SUV in America for the last 16 years, the Toyota RAV4. Debuting at the Tokyo Motor Show in 1989, RAV4 stands for Recreational Active Vehicle with Four-Wheel Drive. Released in Japan and Europe in 1994 before coming to America two years later, it was the first ever vehicle to feature the look and feel of an SUV on a unibody platform. The RAV4 Hybrid features a 2.5-liter dynamic force four-cylinder engine. It comes standard with electronic on-demand all-wheel drive and an impressive 41 miles per gallon city fuel efficiency. The RAV4 breaks away from the mold, just like the head coach of the University of Hawaii women's basketball team, Laura Beeman. She and her staff have revitalized the Hawaii program, leading the Rainbow Wahine to their first conference title since 1997-98 with the 2015 Big West Regular Season Championship and the program's first NCAA tournament berth since 1998, following its 2016 Big West Tournament Championship. Before reaching the 2016 NCAA tournament, Hawaii advanced to the Women's National Invitational Tournament in three straight years, from 2013 to 2015, plus an additional appearance in 2019. Under Beeman's reign, UH has notched five different national postseason appearances. Well, thanks for having me out here at Island Brew in Hawaii. Is this your go-to hangout spot? One of them, absolutely. You know, it's walking distance and we can grab the dogs and walk out here, whether it's morning or afternoon, and enjoy this beautiful view and great food, uh, great coffee. And so it's just a way to kind of unwind and escape a little bit. I can see why. This view is amazing. <laughs> it's, is, it's very pretty. Is it hard for you to unwind from the games, practices, road trips? You know, it takes a minute, um, but you know, the same thing I preach with the team is you got to be at your best. And so to be able to just kind of unwind, take that deep breath, come out here and look at this view, um, it makes it much more enjoyable when you're just close to the water for sure. Now, what are you doing in your free time when you're not sitting out here? Uh, I love to walk my dogs. I take them all throughout Hawaii Kai, go up to Kuli'o'o, go down to the sandbar, um, sometimes jump in the kayak and go fish. Anything to be around the water. Uh, I love animals, so I'm always with my dogs. Um, and they don't talk back. So, <laughs> so it gives me the opportunity just to spend some real good quality time. So take me back to Laura Beeman childhood. Where did you grow up? San Bernardino, California, about an hour, hour and a half outside of LA, um, IE as everyone likes to call it. Uh, youngest of four, uh, great parents. They were just out here for Thanksgiving and spent some wonderful time with us, uh, incredibly supportive. Um, and growing up, just a lot of sports. I think I played everything from football on the street with my brother and baseball, softball, soccer, you name it. Um, did a lot of after church Sunday football with dad and brother, and those are some of my most fond memories. Um, just a really active kid, and I'm thankful my parents supported me in that because I think it helped develop and shape who I am today. So everything was just revolving around sports. Who was your idol that you looked up to? You know, I, didn't, I don't really know idol, but I remember just great, great memories of, of watching the Chicago Bears, Walter Payton, but Mike Singletary, and that look that he would get in his eye is that, you know, safety, free safety, and you knew anybody that went across the middle of the field was just going to get hit hard. And I remember really, for whatever reason, maybe a little warped, but loving the fact that someone was just going to get nailed in the middle of the field. So I loved his intensity. I loved his just commitment to, to his team. Um, but that's one of my, my memories growing up, for sure. Now, do you have that same intensity? Do your players see that look in your <laughs> eye? And they're like, all right, if I go across the middle, we're done. You know, I would never hit a player, for sure. <laughs> but I, they definitely feel the intensity. They feel that commitment to them. Um, they feel the commitment to the team. Um, and, and hopefully that intensity will continue to rub off on them for sure. All right, well, let's hit the road. We got to get you to practice, I think. Let's do it. Now, so your coaching path is, is pretty unconventional. Yes, You go is. from junior college to WNBA to, you know, big time Pac-12 at USC, and then you end up at Hawaii. Can you walk me through how this all happened? Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, actually, I think it's just one of those right place, right time, yeah. um, or wrong place. <laughs> And I actually didn't apply for it. You know, um, a friend, actually it was Carla, not a friend, of but Carla threw in my application and was like, hey, you need to do this Hawaii thing. And I was like, really? And she's like, yeah, you got to do it. And so I, I put my application in. I guess I barely met the deadline. And Hawaii called me at like 7 or 8 o'clock California time. So it was early here still. And same thing. Can we fly out tomorrow morning for the job? You barely made the, the deadline. We'd like to interview you. Um, Sure, I'm going to Hawaii. So, 
came out, interviewed, and lo and behold, eight years later. It, eight <laughs> years? Does it feel like it's been that Sometimes. long you've been here? Yeah. <laughs> Ask me after a loss, yes. <laughs> um, you know, yeah, starting my eighth season and been through a lot of change here. And absolutely love the community, love living here, love the, love the weather, obviously. I think there are just some amazing things going on. So the it, peak of that was that 2016 season. You guys go on the yeah. run through the tournament and then make it to the NCAA. So yeah. I mean, what was that experience like from the fan support to just everything involved with reaching that? Well, it'll be a memory that's just, you know, ingrained in my mind. Um, you know, winning the the Big West Conference the year prior and then not winning the tournament, I was so disappointed. And people were like, you know, how can you be disappointed? And you are. You go in as number one and you want to win it. Um, and then that year, I think we were number two. And we won pretty convincingly against Davis. Um, and watching those young ladies celebrate, that, that still gives me this lump in my throat of, that's why you do what you do. Uh, you want to see your kids celebrate. You want to see your kids happy. You want to see your kids also at times go through the trials and tribulations that, that, that get you to that excitement. And that year had been very much up and down. Um, I think we ended up what, going on a 12 game or 13 game win streak at some point and knew we were playing really good basketball. But uh, that year was fun. And I remember after winning it, looking at my phone and I think I had like 60 something text messages and 100 emails and, and I'm not exaggerating. I was like, this is insane. And, and looking at my kids and saying, you know, do you feel that? And they're like, well, yeah, what are you, what are you talking about though, coach? What, what are we feeling? I'm like, that's the Aloha coming 2,500 miles across the water. And if you can't feel that after what you've just done, then there's something wrong with you. And the kids crying and throwing water and celebrating. And those are things that you just, um, you don't forget. That's you awesome. don't forget. And, and the appreciation I have again for just the, the fans and the community of Hawaii, it's, it, it runs I imagine deep. when that schedule came out for this year, you look <laughs> at this four game gauntlet and you're like, oh boy, we're gonna learn a lot about our yeah. team. And you split it, you go, yeah hang around with NC State, who's one of the better teams in the country. You beat Texas, that's a big time program. Yeah, that was fun. Oregon State's humbling, but that's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they are one of the premier programs now in the country. They are. And then you go on the road at Washington and, and beat a Pac-12 team. I mean, you gotta be yeah. feeling pretty good, I imagine, with that You know, it, it makes you feel good, and then it also sets the expectations really high. And I think that for a group of young girls that we go back to that experience question, how are they gonna handle that, um, that pressure? And you know what we talk about is pressure can do, but you know two things: it can make diamonds or bust pipes. And where do you want to be with that? And our kids know that. So right now, it's 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 figuring out the puzzle of how to sustain the wins. You know, we have high highs and low lows, and we've got to figure out the the middle ground because that's what elite teams do. You know, you can be a, a flash in the pan, right? And we don't want to be a flash in the pan. So now the serious questions here. Yeah. Okay, if we're driving in your car, uh -huh. what's on the radio? Oh wow, um, I'm either going to be rocking some Adele. I love Adele. Um, or I'm going to go old school and I have classic rock on. Give me some Journey. Okay. Um, Black Crows. You can get behind that. Yeah. Okay, now what's the one type of music we would never hear in your car? Hard no. I will not do just hardcore rap. I, the lyrics are just too much for me. I love the beat, but I can't do the hard. The, the hardcore okay, what's your rap. biggest pet peeve? Would really just grind your gears? I do not like static on the radio. Okay. I have to turn it off. <laughs> that, and that's not a big one, but that that's a peeve. Now, one food that you could just never give up? Chips and salsa. Ooh. Chips and salsa. I have to have chips and salsa in my life. Does that come from your Southern California days? Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, we don't have great Mexican food here all the time, right? So I've, I've tried to perfect my own salsa recipe. So I'm, I'm working on that one. Okay, first celebrity crush. First celebrity crush. Oh wow. Maybe um, while you're driving around in your Toyota Corolla. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, gosh, this is gonna age me. Um, probably like Donny Osmond, right? <laughs> That's really making me old. <laughs> really making me old. And it was because my sister, my oldest sister, was such a fan. I heard his music all the time, and so I just listened to his records, and it was records over and over and over. And that was because my sister was, my oldest sister, was such an impact in my life. What would you say is your biggest guilty pleasure? Chips and salsa. <laughs> Chips and salsa. Chips and salsa. Yeah. What's your favorite band? Chips and salsa. <laughs> <What's> your... <laughs>